What's up, party people? It's your boy, Rodney Perry. You're tuned to Rodney Perry Live. We're live every single day, except the days we're not here. And then we still hear kind of, because you can look at a, 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 a press broadcast. Uh, at any rate, man, we appreciate you. If you're tuning in, we mad, mad love, mad respect. Uh, my people, Victor Marshall, man, always a pleasure. Absolutely pleasure. Granny Wilders is in the building. Love y'all, man. You guys are always here for me. I can look at I can look at your name and I know I got I got you. I got Cedric in the building. What's up, Ced? Appreciate you, brother. I see y'all tuning in on YouTube. I see y'all tuning in on Facebook. Man, love, man, respect. We're live on all the platforms. LinkedIn. If you know any business people, tell them we're on LinkedIn. We're on YouTube. We're on X, which is formerly the artist formerly known as Twitter. We're also on Instagram right now. Instagram Live. Matter of fact, let me look at the Instagram. Uh, Emerald Green. What's up, Emerald Green? Shauna, I see you. The real J Ski. Miss Woody is in the building. Mad love, mad respect. It's, it is your boy, Roddy Perry. You're tuning to Roddy Perry Live. We are here, and I see you. I appreciate you. If you want to fully interact with the show, and me to put your stuff on the screen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday of Venice. Wow. You're absolutely right, Cedric. Wow. Today will be my mother's birthday. Ah, just hit me in the stomach, Said. I wasn't even thinking about it. I thought about it yesterday. And I just I just wasn't thinking about it today. Okay, let me grab this picture. Let me grab this picture. Right there. Uh, this is my mommy, a young version of her. <clears throat> Today would have been her birthday. She's the Capricorn. January 19th, when I'm playing, I'm playing poker and I see a, a, a one and a nine, or January 9, an eight and a nine, I always think of my mom. Uh, I love this lady, man. Wow. That's my mommy. She's going home to glory. But you know what? You know, as as a, a son, the oldest, you know, you live this life, and if you're lucky, you'll get to to take care of your parents as they, you know, traverse this life. If you're lucky, and I've I've had that opportunity, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. And you know what? She loved you too. Said she definitely loved you too. Candice TV, I see you. Yeah, she's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Love that lady, man. She is going home to glory, though. All right, let's get to the show. Uh, my homie is, is landing the cut. Uh, is it a wife beater of Friday? I don't know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the show. Granny Wilds is holding star right there. A super sticker. Dollar 99. We keep Granny Wilds. Man, love, man, respect. We appreciate you guys. Uh, much love, much respect. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. My birthday is tomorrow. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know you were the Capricorn. Trina Pinkert, how are you? Good morning as well. My name is Roddy Perry. You're tuning in to Roddy Perry Live. And I noticed this, but when I'm doing the show, I try to keep my eyes on y'all. But my work happens down here. So a lot of times you catch me motherfucking looking down and it looks stupid as hell. But I, I try to look into the camera. And, you know, this great clear, clearance. But if you see me looking down like that, I need to be looking my ass right here. Remind me, you see me acting crazy. No, I'm the first day of Aquarius. Oh, you're an Aquarian. Okay, get out of here, Can't Kids TV. Um, good stuff. Happy birthday to Can't Kids TV. Birthday is tomorrow. 
joining me every single day. I don't know. I, I think she's supposed to be at work. I, I'm going to keep it real. I think she's supposed to be her ass at work, but she be fucking off her days every day with us. We appreciate it. Welcome to the show. What I do. Good morning. I'm off today. Are you off today? Yes, I took today off. Hey, Mel Rose Uncut. Mel. Man, dude, you got to come on with me one morning, man. You know, Mel, Mel is a fabulous comedian, fabulous actor, fabulous barber. He does it all. Mel Rose Uncut. Great guy. Hey, you know what? <clears throat> the sweater you gave me, Mel, it's absolutely my favorite sweater in my closet. Like I want to find, I want to, I want to get my my hoodies made of that same fabric because it's so soft, it's so okay. I just love it, man. It's a great, great piece, man. My favorite sweater, but none. All right, um, drama. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And happy birthday to your mommy. Yeah, happy birthday, to mama, man. I, you know, I didn't, uh, my cousin comes on every day. He reminded me that it, today would be my mother's birthday, January nineteenth. And, uh, you know, even though she gone, we like to stop and acknowledge and show love. And um, last year, what we did, me and my siblings together on, on a, a private uh, stream yard, and we, we just talked and told stories, man. It was so fun. And, you know, you think people are, have moved on, right? You think people are healed. And, and you know, we none of us were really healed, man, until we spent that time together. And so it helps. If you can find a way to kind of talk and tell the stories about that person, yes, they're gone, but they still they still hold the space in your heart, you know. So, uh, uh, and, and blessings to everybody. What's up, Sheryl Anderson? What's up, sis? Man, don't, don't get my hat, don't let me get my hat, Sheryl. Hey, hey, y'all, welcome to come in and show. If y'all need to holler. Uh, What's up? I'm live on my podcast. What's up, sweetie? Uh, what? I mean, don't, yeah. Get the dark, the dark skin one you can find. The darker ones. I like the Maduro. Yeah, they probably, they probably just wrapped them. My daughter is in Puerto Rico right now. And uh, she's looking to uh, get her daddy some cigars. Is this, is this not a great human being? Hey, let me tell you something. If you can live life and have people that used to live in your balls buy your stuff, that's a fucking win. That's the <laughs> best right. way you can do it. I love you. Uh, hey, no, no, no. You, you think about it. All my kids used to live in my balls, man. Can we you move never on? thought of it like that? Like you live in your move? daddy's balls. Can we move on? Especially What's your daddy name? Where my daddy? Ralph. What's your daddy's name? Mr. Ralph. You lived in Mr. Ralph's balls. Let's not talk about my daddy balls. The, well, well he, he got some. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, mama. They say, they say that masturbate could save your life. Do you think it's your like daddy still masturbates? My daddy told you he don't be doing the, the do no more. Just because he ain't doing the do don't mean he ain't, he ain't jacking himself off. Why would he jack off of my a beautiful stepmama is right there every day? First, sir, first, first of all, having sex and masturbating is two different things. You ain't masturbating for sex. You masturbating just for maintenance to clean the pipe. That's crazy to me. It's not crazy at all. You act like you don't, you don't, you don't masturbate. No. Matter of fact, you don't masturbate. Put it, say I don't in the chat right now. If you don't masturbate, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that most people do, and and let's figure it I out. I think men do, but I think, I mean, of course, women do, but I think it's a lot easier for women not to than a man. I mean, but but usually women that don't are like sexually frustrated. Yeah, I think so. Okay. What are they saying? Grand Wild, so this uh is so this is a mute and TV to put the sound in my ears is a type of talk. Okay, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to mute this one. 
We talking grand, talk grown folks talk. It's a Friday. My name is Rodney Perry. That young lady is one act drama. One act drama. What what do you live by? Like what what do you live by? Like what do you like? What I mean, like, what are the words that you that get you through your day every day? Be good to myself so I can be good to others. Oh, very dope. Very dope. I like that. I like that. Um, I'm always a finishing. Like, because I'm great. I'm great at starting things, but I have to make myself finish them. And so I, I'm uh, that's that's my thing. I always tell myself, go on, just finish, just finish. Uh, Sherelle says, I am amazing, A H M A Z I N G, and that is amazing. Uh, color uh, hats, she is also always amazing. Uh, Victor Marshall says he'll be in your town today. That's not what he said. Oh, oh, you're in his town, you in LA? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, you, be, you, be, you be just going places. <laughs> I'm gonna see you tonight. When you when you what you doing in LA? Hanging out. What are you doing set set drama? You said what? Tell the people. What you doing set set? I know you're getting up. No, I'm not. I'm not doing a set. I'm really just hanging out. I don't like it. You got you gotta do a set. You can't be in LA and not do a set. You can. I can't. If I'm in LA, I'm trying to I'm do a I'm literally set. here today. I'm leaving huh? tomorrow. I'm leaving tomorrow. So you just gonna see some friends, kick it, and come back home. I'm literally here for one day. Uh, everybody stop right there. Victor Marshall just got twenty dollars. Drop twenty dollars, man. Mad love, Mary respect, man. We appreciate that, Victor. We love you, bro. Mad love, Mary, Mary respect, Victor Marshall with super, super donation. We appreciate that. Um, and that that the YouTube uh, uh viewers can do stuff like that. Uh, how about this? Are you freaky? Are you a freaky person? What you smile at that for? What you smile at that for? I'm just smiling. You, I can't be happy. You you're not you're not freaky. Say tell me you're not freaky, drum. I enjoy I having a good time. Oh, shit. Let me tell you something. Freaky is new. I'm grown. Let's start there. I'm not freaky. I'm grown. I take that. I take that. So, this is the thing, fellas. Be, be wary of calling yourself freaky. Because freaky is the new buzzword. They with, sometimes they be sleeping with boys. Whole like lot of shit. They be like a pussy. Let me tell you something. These dude tell you freaky ladies. Know this. That nigga might be super freaky. That dude like bussy. He might be. <laughs> Good morning, heifers. How God heifers in the building. Freddie Jackson. Freddie Jackson. Freddie Jackson. Is that the real Freddie Jackson? Uh, it may, it may be, you know it all right here. Yo, uh, I'm not freaky at all. As a matter of fact, I'm probably a little boring now that I think about it. Like, I used to think when I was a young man that I was exciting, but I'm not. I don't want no new shit. I don't leave my booty alone. If you need, if you my wife been trying to tie me up for years, I'm not gonna do it. Now that's lame. Why would you not do that? I'm not tied. I was my people were slaves. Ain't no way I'm gonna voluntarily tie myself up. Your wife is not a slave master. Nigga, she will be if she didn't I let her cuff me up. And that's fine. You should want to be. Her no, it's not. No, it's not. I don't want to be a part. That's that's freaky. I don't want that's to be a freaky. part that's, of the woman trying mid. to them. Huh? That's very. That's very mid. That's not freaky. That's very I'm okay mid. with mid. Wait, no, no, no. That's that's me. No, 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 no. And and I'm an improv. I believe in saying yes, but guess what? Hell to the no. What you're not gonna do is tie me in. But you're not tying you. right here. You're not putting no handcuffs on me. I don't want no part of no bondage. I don't. I don't got out of bondage. Hey, Dez White, agree with me? Dez White say, man, they be trying to tie me up too. Why they want to? Why they want to tie a brother up? Is Dez White white? 
Well, he just light skin. No, he he black. He comedian. You don't know Dez White? No, I don't know Dez. Hey, Dez. Dez, Dez from Houston, man. Dez, Dez, he spent a lot of time in Dallas as well. He's the yes, king I of Texas. Yes, I do know him. When you say Houston, yes, I do. Yes, I yeah, do. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant comedian. Yes, I do. Tour many years with earthquake. Uh, God's been says Rodney has a freaky whisper. You know oh, what? We back with the throat. You haven't I whispered in a while. You, I don't think you whispered since the second half of 2023. No, because they talked about me sad. They said, you know, oh, Rodney trying to. You know what? I got, I got <laughs> different headphones, and my headphones is not loud in my ear like that. So I be when I'm real loud, it made me bring this down. A bit, you know, so it, that, that's all it is. It's like you know drama. Don't act like that. Minnie Jackson's in the Minnie Jackson's in the building. Take me drama. Take me to your favorite teacher. Ooh, my favorite teacher. I have two. So okay. my first favorite teacher was my kindergarten teacher. Oh, great. Kindergarten. You remember your kindergarten teacher? Yes, Miss Seidner. I love that white lady. I was at Augusta Christian School. She was my kindergarten teacher. And my second favorite teacher was Miss Ashley. She was my first black teacher, and that was third grade. Really? So, yeah. like, she made, obviously, uh, they both made an imprint on your life. Like, what do you remember most vividly? I remember Miss Seidner was just really, really nice. Because I went to a school, Gus Christian, full of white people, full of affluent people. And I was the one little brown speck until I got to first grade. And I went there from pre th uh, pre-K three all the way so to uh, second grade. So I was the only little brown girl. And she just treated me so warm. Because I oh, knew wow. I was different. And a couple of the kids treated me different. I'm like... But you know, looking back, I'm like, nigga, we pay the same amount of tuition. Go to How head. about that? How about that? Ain't no scholarship. <laughs> and teachers, and let's shout out our teachers this morning. If you're in the chat, shout out your teacher. If you're on Facebook, shout out your, your teacher that made the biggest influence. Miss Ty, Minnie, I thought about this because somebody's in the um, chat named Minnie Jackson. Here's Minnie Jackson says good morning. But Minnie Tyree, Miss Tyree, Chicago, my fifth grade teacher, Miss Tyree was the best of all time. Like I, I kept up with her. She passed away recently. I kept with, up with her her entire life, and we maintained the ship. You know, she she was just telling me, say, you know, I knew you was gonna be something because you was you was a talking ass boy. You know, <laughs> I, I, got I was two a teachers talker. from high school. What? Okay, Miss Elaine Jackson. She wasn't my teacher, but she was one of them teachers. If you was if you was coming through that school, she was still your teacher, even though you went in her yeah. class. Like it or not. Like it or not. Yeah, she was one of them. Miss Elaine Jackson was super cool, and we all we friends on Facebook. And then um, Miss Farrer, she was my English teacher, AP English, Advanced Placement. She was really dope. And Miss Grant, I took French one, two, and three from her. Wow, you took French. I took French as well. I took French. Uh, my parents. French has my side here. French side. Are you your fluent? No. Cause you don't get to use it. I should have took Spanish because I would have been able to use I it. Took Spanish because you could you could definitely stay closer to it. Yeah. Victor Marshall says Miss was my great teacher. She outraced the boys. Wow. Candice TV says Mrs. Warner was my favorite. Mrs. Warner, and uh, you know, always it's always a pleasure to meet these. You know, you you cross the lives and you wonder do they remember you as vividly as you remember them. Oh, Miss Miles you know I mean? was the first person to like latch on to my acting capabilities and like really use me for everything. And I traveled with her to perform shows. That was my first time traveling in high school to perform uh, theater. Kadeesh George, I went out uh, with him this past weekend and he put up improv show teachers versus students. And it was so awesome, man. What they're doing with these kids, building their confidence. And uh, it was just really impressive to watch the drama, man. He did such a great job. Uh, Sherelle Anderson says that Miss Harris, my first grade teacher, remember your first grade teacher? Like, how about this? What's your young memory as a human being on this planet? Ooh, I was four. And no, I was like three. Yeah, I was three, and I was laying on my dad, and I will never forget. And to this day, I'm still afraid of him. A water bug flew and landed on my face. A big ass water bug. Yes, flew and and I wouldn't. I ain't never forgot that. Never forgot wow, that. That's crazy. 
And what 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 he do? He just wipe him, wipe him away or whatever. He didn't get a chance to wipe away. I flew off of him so fast and crossed that room. Scared the crap out of me. I'm hey, I just put me. the uh, I just put the link in the chat if you want to come in and say hi to us this morning. You welcome here. Uh, what's your youngest memory? What is your youngest memory? Uh, goodness gracious. I remember walking to school with my grandfather, and I had to be three or four years old. I had to be, because I was definitely sub five. I was under five. Uh, I remember vividly uh, going over there by my mother's house, 77 The Bishop, walking down that street. And then what I didn't know is my grandfather was alcoholic. And so he was slightly drunk. But he was always, he all he loved him some Rodney Perry. He would take me, walk me to school, and that was his exercise for the day. I think he stopped and got him a bottle of vodka. Uh, Granny Wilders, my favorite teacher, was Mrs. Livingston, the third grade. She was the first one to say I didn't belong in extra classes, in, in challenge classes. She believed in me and it paid off. Thank you, Mrs. Livingston, for. for Sewing into these kids, man. It's, it's really a big deal. All the teams out there, it's Friday. You're working for very little money. Did you hear about this uh thing in, in uh, Detroit, right? So Detroit, the administrators, I, I, I saw this on um one of those shows about people that fraud people. And so some of the administrators at the schools in Detroit was like um, – they're getting their supplies from a guy that was kicking them back money. Like, like through through uh cards. So they essentially was robbing the system. So you got you got poor schools, it's already poor, and then these people is um so they they put in, let's say they put in for the ring paper. Well, they only got 25, and the rest they get in money. So the school pay for it. And then they get them get that stuff kicked back to them money, and they was making thousands of dollars a month, thousands of dollars a month. And she joined us. You can tell us about her earliest memory or her favorite teacher, Michelle C. Your birthday is tomorrow. Michelle C. What's, what's up, kid? Good morning. How you doing? Good. My favorite teacher was Miss Warner because she was the first teacher to tell me to punch somebody in the face when they mess with you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa wait a minute. What what made her say that? What what she was just telling well, you to defend yourself? Well, you know you had little bullies or whatever, and people say, "Oh, you light skin, you got long hair, you think all that." He said, "Just punch their ass in the face." I said, "Come on now, that was it for me." She was my favorite teacher from then on out. And then the, y'all y'all rocking together from then on out. Oh yeah, that was my third grade teacher. And the prettiest teacher I had was a lady named Miss Fati- Miss Fashina. Now Miss Fashina was like a t- a teacher's aide. When well, I this lady was. Fine. She was so fat, and that and that was back in the day when when student when teachers weren't giving students no ass. They was they just weren't giving it to you. <laughs> they didn't. They, they wouldn't. They wouldn't give right there no ass at all. You're right. I am not. You're absolutely right. Nobody gave me. Matter of fact, I was I was barely when they start giving me give me a little cool cat. I was barely getting it then. Anthony Williams. Cool cat. I, I said it. Cool cat. <laughs> Had a job the spring of my senior year, and this song played every day. Oh, that's what I wanted to cover today. Thank you for reminding me, Anthony Williams. Thank you for reminding me. Let's talk about your soundtrack to your life. Like mm-hmm. every every decade, there's a song that marks time in your life. What's your soundtrack to your life? Just like you your, let's, let's, let's go. Let's, let's go three songs. Your young life. Your your middle life and now you whatever you rock to now. Okay. Younger. My younger life. Now, Michelle, I know you. I know you can do this because you you got music in your blood. I know. I'm trying to figure out what I do with my young my younger life. I was on my TLC real hard. I was hat to the back. Really? Yes. <laughs> you couldn't tell me I went left eye. Mm mm. So, so when left eye passes away, that day. You. Oh yeah, I left. I was. I met her before. She was real cool. Yeah, I know her sister. I know a raindrop. I know raindrop a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, my nice young name. life. My young self would be Tony Braxton. I was obsessed with Tony Braxton when I was a little girl. Really? 
Yes, man. Like, I heard, I heard, I heard a bang about Tony and it took me off her bandwagon. I was obsessed with her and Shirley Caesar when I was a little girl. Shirley Caesar? Yes. That's a I little old for you, Andy. How old were you loving Shirley Caesar? Probably like six or seven. My, if my mama watches, she can post on. I love Shirley Caesar draw bones. That was my jam. Hey, I'm while you playing, guess who's the right parent? Who? Shirley Caesar. Shirley okay. Caesar, love me. Let me. So I, I did a time during the cruise, and Shirley Caesar, she, she came to me and said, come for a second, young man. I said, yes, ma'am, Miss Caesar. She said, do you have to call that cousin? I, said, I don't. I have to do what I can do without cousin. She said, mm. <laughs> come have dinner with me tomorrow. And I, I had dinner with Shirley Caesar like three nights in a row. Uh -huh. We talked, and they were so nice and kind to me. And Shirley Caesar is a joy, man. She's a joy to talk to. And she was just, it was like being there with your mom, you know, and kicking it, you know. And it gave me a chill to even talk about her. Man, she's such a sweet, sweet, sweet person. And Shirley Caesar loves to write. Like, she's talking about my jokes, but she was like laughing, at, laughing like a woman. I saw, I saw. <laughs> Shirley Caesar. Okay, okay, for me, um, I, I know this, I know this taboo. But R. Kelly marks time in my life, man. R. Oh, Kelly and marks we have R. Kelly moment. Like, so, like, young Rodney Perry becoming aware of slow songs and stuff. R. Kelly, Honey Love, give me that honey love. All that, boy, come on. Mm -hmm. Kelly. And then I just thought about this this morning New Edition. New Edition. Oh, yeah. New Edition is stuff that wouldn't fly today, though. Don't trust a big button to smile. You can't say that no more. Why you can't? Okay. Me, and the crew, me and the crew used to do it. Really? They really right the boat? Yeah, you can say that, but you you can say the big butt thing. You can't say the don't <laughs> the other one. I don't think I don't know if you can say the big button to smile no more. That ain't All right, what's what what what, what music? Oh, oh, at least say Mary J. Blige got her. Mary J. Mm. Blige. Oh, that my life CD. Yes. Oh yeah, man. Let me tell you something. Y'all don't like y'all. Y'all funny though, ladies. Y'all don't like Mary J. Blige since she going through some shit. Nobody like Happy Mary. Summer. I like that. I want to be happy song. I like that one. And that new one she got out is dope. Where she um, I forgot the name of it, but she said something like she still believe in love. Yeah, I want to be oh. happy when she was fucking going through it though. And true, but she said I still believe in love. I like that one. That's the new one. I don't know about that. All right, Mary J. Blige is a big deal. Uh, oh, somebody said uh, greens, beans, tomato. Uh, like that. <laughs> That's what y'all have for lunch. <laughs> <when 'all> <laughs> <laughs> he, he like when Shirley said that greens, beans, tomato, mm -hmm. yeah. lamb, bread, hog, mom. A uh, friend just said, Invite me in, bro. Have a very funny story about a teacher. Uh, I put a link, the link in the chat. Where are you? You are on Facebook. The link is in the chat. Just grab it. Oh, stop right there. Sex talk with T Gray's in the building. What's up, uh, T Gray? You off work today, or you you fucking off your day like drama? <laughs> you guys, welcome to come in. <laughs> You're welcome to come in. That goes the link. Put the link in the chat. You should be able to see it on your Facebook, on your Twitter, and Instagram. What's up? Thank y'all for coming in. Uh, I Ron, I see you, Fat Diva Black in the building. Glenn Morris coming up. This weekend drama is what? What? I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. That's right. The Bias Theater, myself, Griff. Um, oh, this Coco. All star lineup. Coco Brown is on that as well. Oh, nice. When I tell you, about to, go, about to go and drop fire on their butts this weekend. Right, Perry, the, the show is for the Deltas. Super duper excited about mm. that. And then. First week of February, second through the fourth, at here at Atlanta, up at Comedy Corner, and Uptown is one of those places that marks time in my life. Cause I was on the stage at Uptown when I first met Jamie Foxx, and he put me on with the Loser. I was on the stage at Atlanta at there when I first came back from my stroke. It was the first place I went on stage. Hmm. Um, uptown Comedy Corner is one of those places, man. It's, it's part of the fabric of Rodney is as a comedian, and uh, I'll be there. The second through the fourth of February, and I'm super duper excited about that. And guess who'll be with me? Who? 
Flo Sor Maker. Yes. I like Flo Sor Maker, man. She t- I love Flo. So I'm excited about Flo coming through. Uh, here it goes. Great show today. I'm Rodney Perry. You're doing the Rodney Perry Live. We have our through. Won't be here all day. Timothy said, I'll be in Atlanta in March. I'm also going to be at the Baltimore Comedy Factory coming up. The the My favorite club in America. Let me okay. tell you something. Baltimore loves some Rodney Perry. Like, I sell tickets, but I sell tickets in Baltimore. Thousands of tickets. I whoop ass in Baltimore. You don't want to. You don't want to see me in motherfucker. Boy, I'd be so excited. I'd be. And you what know, is Baltimore like? Baltimore Factory is huge too, huh? What is I've, like? I've been a lot of places, but I've never been to Baltimore. What is Baltimore like? Black. It's like Chicago. It's it's definitely okay. a black city. It's kind of like Chicago, but it's got more. It's got that DC. Her, he, her, Mister Perry, okay. and the food is fucking incredible. And oh, it's going to be cold as hell when he get there. Oh, mm-hmm. right. I don't like that. That's going to be a little chilly. Ladies and gentlemen, you know him from his, 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 his great catalog of records. Seen him sing, You Are My Lady. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Freddie Jackson. Freddie! Not Freddie. What's up with you, man? Wait a minute. Freddie, you you <laughs> Rob, what's happening, man? <laughs> you the wrong Freddie. No, nah, I, I ain't that pretty, but I sing though. I got music out too, Rob. But I listen. I was <laughs> tripping on that when you were talking. About. You got your teacher, man. What teacher uh, affected your life, man? Man, listen. My fifth grade teacher, Miss Gary, man. I had a crush on her, man. But I used to act a fool up in her class. I mean, she was a pretty red bone. Listen, I was a little boy, but I was fascinated by her, man. I'm gonna tell you what she did to me that made me that made me. Look at women different the rest of my yeah. life. You hear me? She put a note on me because I was acting a fool up in her class. She put a teacher note on me and she put a smiling face on side outside of the teacher note. I leave the school after acting a fool, throwing spitball, won't sit down. I'm just acting a fool in her class. Man, she put that note on me. I skipped on home. I gave that note to my mama. My mama told my tail up. Well, that taught me a lesson, homie. You listen, that's the worst note you can get is a teacher note. And then mama was tired because she had been working all day. And mama told me, I ain't going to whoop your butt right now. I'm going to whoop you later on. So I learned about an anticipated. That's the worst butt whooping you can get, Rob. You hear my one when mama say, I owe you a butt whooping. I'm talking about, listen. That's the worst butt whipping you can get. But I never forgot. I learned how to read early behind that, Rod. You hear me? <laughs> I was reading on the I was reading on the college level after I got that that note. Listen, every note that was pinned to me after that boy, and if it had any big words in it, I learned how to read what those big words were in the fifth grade. You hear me? I never forgot that, man. You hear me? <laughs> Thank you for coming on, bro. That was a great yeah. story. Too. Here, man, appreciate you, <laughs> man. Thank you, bro, for letting me have man. Hey, Freddie Jackson popping in with a great story. Wow, well done, sir. <laughs> hey, hey, how about that smiley face? Man, you how you gonna put a smiley face and mean shit in out of the night? Okay. So he went read it, so he went throw That's it away. Right. All right, here we go. An arousing theme of this or that, this or that, like this or that. We so need that to the songs. Oh, you're right. What we gotta say. <laughs> The we was on the younger man. version. We didn't do the middle what's version. Your, what's, right. your current, what's on your current playlist? Drama. Ooh, always and forever. My favorite song in the world, Tennessee Whiskey. I like this good. That's a great song. And it's That's never my, bad. I don't care if a person song. can't sing. I don't care if they can't sing the song sound good. That is my favorite song in the world. Uh, now, who, which version do you like? Chris Stapleton. I like mm. the version. Okay. And then close behind that is Kiki Wyatt. And right behind that is T-Pain. T-Pain got a version of that song? Ooh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's on, it's on YouTube. Nice. Really? It's nice. Like, people don't get T-Pain his credit for being a great singer, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He uses auto-tune so heavily that he don't really get credit for being so dope. And, of course, Vanessa Fraction, a friend of the show, uh, is over there doing a nappy podcast with him, man. And, like... I want to meet T Pain because I think I think we're gonna be friends. Mm-hmm. You, know, you ever meet somebody you like that nigga gonna be my friend? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think me and BT Payne gonna be friends. I want Tank to be my friend. Tank is my vibe. Tank is fucking amazing. Yes, I love Tank vibe. Like I, I, I like I, want, I, I need Tank. Um, like like my favorite podcast now is the R&B podcast. Yes, R&B money. R&B money is a great podcast. Uh, but you know when when I'm thinking of a, a soundtrack to my life. Yearning is one of the songs that I always love, man. Mm. Charlie, Charlie Wilson, Yearning. Mm-hmm. I love that. Charlie song. is a great guy too. I met Charlie before. He is so dope. He's a nice guy. He's amazing. He's one of them that you just glad to you met him. Hey, and you know this thing about Charlie, man. Charlie was on that that narcotic, man. <laughs> you know people. No way, no way. I on lift him up and bring him down in the same sentence. <laughs> he took no, a page out of cat book. <laughs> yeah, he did. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. First, I thought he was on that, that narcotic and got <laughs> off of it and lived another lifetime. He's proved mm-hmm. that you can you can have the toughest thing happen to you in life and recover and live a whole nother life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a man. And unlike George Lopez. Charlie still his wife right that saved him from the crack. Mm-hmm. George Lopez got a got a uh a kidney from his wife and left her ass immediately. Yeah, he needed his ass whooped for that. I I mean, listen. I the boy, as soon as I got my strength back, I would have whooped his ass all up and down that hospital. I mean, but I mean you, I guess you can't stay together once you get healthy. You like, you know, I'm thank you. I don't know. Uh Michelle C, what's your song? What's your final song? Final song. Favorite song or just what I'm listening to now? Whatever you, whatever you rocking now. Right now? Oh, I like that Coco Jones. I like Coco Jones. And you know Coco mm-hmm. Jones got a song with... um. Oh, stop right there. Stop right there. Coco Jones got a song with um Chicago... The, Ch- BJ, the Chicago Kid. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like... It's got a nice little swing to it. I, you know, I realize I like I like happy music. If you can yeah. say like I sort of like listening to fucking shit to make you want to ch- cut you down your throat. <laughs> so you don't I'm listen to Shadeen. None of that slow sad shit. I, I don't want to. no sad <laughs> shit. And they got a song with Shade singing in the silhouette, and you know Shade mm-hmm. finds it, and I like that. But other than that, I be like, look. Okay, start right there. Join us with the show with, with the cold black hair. T Gray coming in the building. What's up, T Gray? Hey, hey, y'all. Good morning, y'all. Hey, 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 hey T What's the uh what 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 songs on your soundtrack for life? Your your life soundtrack that you your young self, your middle self, and your older self, your grown self. Um, imagine that R. Kelly off the chocolate factory. Imagine that forever. I don't even know that song. That's that's a bona fide hitter. That's a bona fide hitter. That's a bona fide hitter. Seriously. Like all our kind of inspirational shit. Like I believe I can fly. Let me tell you something, mm-hmm. nigga. I believe I can fly, nigga. I be nigga about to take flight. <laughs> yeah, if y'all haven't heard that song, go on, run it back. You know, go on, run it back. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. Yes, yes, because the end of that song, that, that guitar riff at the oh my god, it is. Yeah. Now, have, it's, you it's, ever, for have you ever? Have you Have you ever listened to one of your friends like like music preference? Realize y'all don't listen to the same shit at all. Yeah, mm-hmm. my brother. Yeah. Like you can listen to R. Kelly and somebody could look like my wife and I like Joe, right? I like Joe, she like Joe. But the song she like ain't none of my song. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> she likes some shit off Joe. I'm like, words, though. I'm like, what the fuck? When did he produce this record? She be she just know all kind of shit. Okay. I like hey, Joe okay, the uh, song. Good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michelle. What just Michelle? No, I said Joe got a song called "I'm in Love." I like that song, and I didn't know that was him until recently. Uh, I'm a big fan, and, and the thing he, the cover he made of uh, uh, what's the white woman that's dating uh, uh, LeBron's homeboy? Adele. Adele. He oh. he covered that Adele song that was a big hit. Oh, okay. All right, Joe's on tour right now. That's maybe why he's doing all this stuff. 
Mm-hmm. The What's going on in my school. life? This comedy, man. This comedy. Comedy and all these kids I got. That's about it. No, I'm saying. What's your soundtrack? What's the other songs on your soundtrack? You got two more songs. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said what was going on in my life. There's a delay. I apologize. Um, Don't worry about it. Good question. That's a good question. It would have to be Go Go. And I'm sure your audience, if they're not in DC, they don't know Go Go, but it's a Go Go cover of Anita Baker, um, Sweet Love. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I fucks with Go Go. If you have not been to a Go Go party, do yourself a favor. Next time you're in DC, go gotcha. and watch the, the same song for 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like the go go drums, they gotta be so disciplined because they gotta stay in the pocket and play that mm-hmm. th- th- that same the same beat all yeah. night. Yeah. So when so I got go-go married, go-go I danced to that at my wedding. Yes. That was like our first dance. We came out to the original to the Anita Baker and then it switched up to the go go in the middle. Oh, oh yeah. it was it was magical. I ain't married no more, but it was magical. <laughs> <laughs> and that moment was a great moment, though. And yeah, it was it, a great it, moment. It about marriage, like uh, a good friend of mine said this to me recently, and I was like, "Wow, that's dope." He said that his relationship ended, but he had found some pictures when they were happy, and he said, "I wish I had these just when we were going through it, because I could have mm-hmm. remembered the happy. Times. I couldn't remember no happy times until I looked at those pictures." And so sometimes you need to remind yourself that there were good times. If they make any sense, yeah, most That's definitely. Why let that nigga go though. Mm-hmm. Well, Victor Mars says house music all the way from him. I right, Victor, here go. What what's your go to house cut though? Oh. All right, T Gray, I'll just get it. that thought. That's for Victor. Yo, what's your last soundtrack song? Oh man, this is a hard hitting question this morning. Uh, <laughs> It's hard, I swear it is. Like because, it's, <laughs> because it's so much music that I feel like I've been impacted by. Um, mm-hmm. mm, y'all, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe don't so stop believing by journey. Journey, don't stop wedding. believing. Okay. What's, that? What's that? Journey, don't stop believing. Don't stop. Believe it. Oh, that, that's how I did. That's how I did. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, okay. That, that you took it to another level when you said that, T. Gray, because you got us to the white music. Yeah. What's your yes. What's your favorite artist? Your favorite song by a white person? That would be Michelle it. C. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Give it away now. Give it away. Give it away. Okay, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. All right. Okay. Black drama. Your favorite song by a white person. Chris Stapleton, Tennessee whiskey. Yeah, uh, mine is what you want to do for love. Which? Oh, I didn't know that was white person. Yeah, he is absolutely white. Mm-hmm. He just passed away last year. Oh wow! And I okay. interviewed him on my previous version of the show when I was on us. Uh, when I was, um, I can't think of the platform now, but yeah, when I was on there, I interviewed him, and he was a wonderful guy. Somebody said Rick Springfield, Bon Jovi. Trina Pinker said all the old school eighties. What's the eighties? Mm-hmm. What what is the eighties? Oh, that's uh, a bunch of stuff. Michael Jackson. <laughs> New yeah. edition. Madonna. Madonna. Hey, I heard him do some blasphemy yesterday. He said that Chris Brown is better than Michael Jackson. He said Usher Who was better than it? Michael Jackson. Just put on the internet. Who smoked crack? Who on crack? Who I'm on like, that now? He, he said, all you old heads <laughs> over here, me. And I'm saying it. He said, Chris Brown. He said, oh, she got a better catalog. Chris Brown can, is a better dancer. And Who on like, that narcotic? Ain't nobody better than the original. Nope. But see, to be, I feel oh, like if you're going to say that that person is better, me that means... I love me ready for the world. Spread mm. my wings. And fly mm. I used to mess with one of them dudes from Ready for the World. (laughs) You know what my favorite inspirational song is? Get to me. I hope you dance. Mm. That's my favorite. When you get a choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. You never 
Oh, you, you know what, Freddie? Right? I, I did. I, I sung a troop song, but you said you said "Ready for the World." Oh, Sheila is ready for the world, and "Ready for the yeah. World" is part of the people on my soundtrack because "Ready for the World" made it cool to be dark skin with a. Curl. <laughs> I don't think my inspirational. Go ahead. Not sound. I think it was cool. I think it was cool. But she'll see inspiration with your inspirational song. Still standing, Monica. Oh, Monica got some great music too. People don't give Monica credit for being a fucking amazing singer. Oh yeah. yeah. Her voice is phenomenal. When I yeah. be inspirational, it's always Marvin Sapp. Mm. Mm. Okay. Always Marvin Sapp. Uh uh. So y'all want to hear Marvin Sapp story? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Marvin, what's Marvin Sapp big hit? Never would have made it. Never would have made it, right. I'm on radio with Monique. Right. We talking about Marvin Sapp. He about to come on the show in a couple of days. He talking, I was like, you know, you know, it's dope that he got a big hit. I would never would have made it. But you know, he didn't write that song. You know, that's, that's a cover from old back in the day. Monique, writing period, I don't think mm. that's true. Rodney, that is that man's song. I was like, I don't know about that, Monique. I don't think he wrote that song. I think that's somebody else's song, and he, you know, he covered it. We have a full argument on the air about it. So Marvin, Marvin Sapp, two days later, come to the studio. He said, I heard somebody been lying on me. He's like, what you talking about? They, they say some comedian that was on Monique's show said, I didn't write it, would have made it. Then he we commenced to tell me the whole story. I wrote the song, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad, buddy. You got me. <laughs> I just felt like, I felt like that song was older than him. I was wrong. I was so wrong. And I was, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong, wrong. I'm, I'm, I go, I go wrong hard. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Scooter said his inspirational song is Nelly's Ride With Me. I don't know. Okay. Zoop, zoop. Ride with me, with you, with you. That's okay, I guess. I yeah, mean, that's you, okay. you got you to you take, take it for what it is. You know, I'm not mad at the soundtrack. All right, ladies, here we go. We talked about music enough. We're on. The name of the game is this or that, this or that. All right. T. Gray. Kind of about T. Gray. I remember she was sex talk with T. Gray. She ain't got time to be talking about sex no more. She's like, <laughs> this or that. Texas Pete or Louisiana hot sauce? Oh, I can't pick. I don't like hot sauce. Ooh. I'm one of them, y'all. I'm one of you them. No hot sauce at all. No hot sauce at all. Hand me your black card. I don't do hot sauce. I don't do ketchup. I don't do debit eggs, potato salad. All the good, all the, the long list of black shit. I, all I don't the do nigga likes. You don't do that. Oh. <laughs> She said, "I don't do no oh, negative." Okay, wait, wait. So wait, wait, you don't mess with so you don't mess with that stuff. What do you like? What good nigga food do you like? Everything else. You can give me some chicken, some collard greens, some watermelon. You know, you can give me that. I want to feel it. Turkey. You don't put no sauce on yeah. your collard greens. No, I don't need sauce. sauce. Yeah. My greens good. You need no hot sauce on her greens. Mm -hmm. No, hot sauce on greens is good eating. It might be. <laughs> hey, you talking about that boy here? All right, all right. TLC, Texas Pete or Louisiana hot sauce? Whichever one's cheaper. Oh, you just, you just, you just gonna, you just gonna, just what? I like hot sauce. I don't care what who, what the brand is, as long whatever I can afford it that day. Really? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. My family don't want nothing but Louisiana hot sauce. They don't. If you come here with some Pete, they'll fight you. Lord. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's a new one. Hey, little dog. Wow. Look at that. How old is he? You muted. You muted. muted. I muted because he was fussing at first. He's eight months. Oh, it seemed like yesterday you had this baby man. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is a good look. This is a good look. Look at all that hair. Did you have heartburn while you had him in there? Yes, it was terrible. It yeah, that's terrible. that all the hair that caused that. <laughs> it's all right, though. 
It's all right. Wow. Though. Good for you, man. God bless you, man. He is, he is gorgeous. He decided What's to make a cameo. Adrian. Adrian. How are you? <laughs> He's not used to being in this corner of the house. He's looking he like it's a whole new place. <laughs> I know you're like, what are we doing? He's looking all up in the air on the internet. Hey, Mr. Know, Adrian, it's your debut. We're going to see you on stage pretty soon, right? He might be. He mm-hmm. might be. He and might, might want to get him back. And shit. He's a fucking beautiful ass little boy. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. He looked like his mama. I don't know if y'all can see it. But he looked just like well, his mama. Daddy look like, nigga. His daddy might have be, had that face with a mustache. Listen, his daddy is six foot two, dark skinned African. He don't look nothing like his daddy. Goddamn. Not at all. <laughs> at all. Nah. Now, I he look that. like your dad, though, don't he? Mm, a little bit around the nose. A little yeah. bit. Wow, ain't that something good for you? That's that, that number guy right there. I'm Chelsea. Uh, mm. Oh, no, no, no. One Act Drama. This is Pete. You're a Texas girl. Or I Louisiana. Am Island. of the T. Gray family. I don't food with, I don't eat spicy nothing. Don't give me no hot sauce. Are you serious? Yes. Don't want I, This is like getting struck by light. I got two black girl, with girls that don't touch our sauce. Brian, we don't mm-hmm. niggas on the show today. You know what? <laughs> All the real niggas, please stand right, up. Here we go. Here we go. This is that. Now, this tell me how. This is your age. This is just going to tell your age. This is that. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. 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 I'm an Instagram guy, but I'm supposed to be on Facebook. I'm yeah, you are. You can get everybody business on Facebook. So I do appreciate yeah. Facebook because yeah. they be telling their business over there. Oh, Granny Wallace, she fuck with that red rooster. What you want the red rooster? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Y'all ain't saying nothing about Red Hot either. Red Hot used to be the number one brand. I don't even know. Oh, oh you talking about uh, they you definitely put that shit on everything. Business. It's still, it's still big, and I like the old lady that that, that, that do the commercial. She's great. Mm-hmm. All right, listen to that. Listen to that drama, drama or comedy. Comedy. Uh, one night drama says comedy. But Chelsea I love drama a horror. Comedy. Horror should have been really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really, I don't, I don't fuck with horror. I like nobody trying to fucking scare me on purpose. I don't like it. I don't, don't want to be a part of it. I don't like motherfuckers startling me. Like my mother in law. Startling. She got the <laughs> walk in her. She walked through this house. She startled me all all the time because I can't hear the bitch. Mo- I'm sorry, I can't hear her moving around. <laughs> Two or three times a day, every day. All right, Michelle's comedy, comedy or drama. Comedy. All right, T. Gray, you over here now. Welcome. Comedy <laughs> or drama. Drama. I'll really? say drama. Really. Yeah. Yes, because it's going to lead to killing, and I like of some good killing. It. <laughs> you like some killing? I like some killing, yes. Shoot them up, and the more you know, suspense gets me to it, I love it. Wow, huh? she says she's killing. Okay. That's why I like I horror. Somebody going to die. A few people going to die in a horror movie. That's the mm. best. Wow, she says she's killing. I can only watch horror with the music down. If, if the music is up, I can't watch it. All that tension and shit, I can't deal with it. Freddie said he mm-hmm. like comedy. All right, here we go. Here we go. And I want all the guys in the chat to chime in. T. Gray, formerly known as the Sex Talk with T. Gray. It's going to be good. Ass or titties? Titties. Titties. Yes. Yes, Lord. I'm a big I'm a fan of titties. I'm a, I'm a titty fan. And I'm going to say this. I, I like the underboob. Like the new the boob, the the boob that come under the boob, is it's like a reverse cleavage. I like that. <laughs> that makes me happy. All right, drama, you sitting over there at the A cup, ass or titties? Ass. People look stupid with no ass. I think they look real crazy. <laughs> I think you are people with no ass now, now, are so funny looking. To me. But with, like, you don't want your man with no ass or no titties. Am I right? Well, I like to have something. Men look stupid with no ass, too. Why is your back long like that? It look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle C, please bring this in. Ass or titty? Dick. Dick? 
What you say? I prefer a dick. I don't give a damn about no ass or no titties. They can get the fuck out of here. I like dick. Oh God. that that is that I never heard Michelle say nothing vile like that. <laughs> that shit, that shit. I'm so traumatized. Did she just say? <laughs> Those are my kind of answers. See, see how reserved I am. <laughs> hey, hey, you usually want to say the wild shit. Okay, here we go. Right, here we go, guys. Shall see friends or family. Oh, that's hard because some of my friends are my family. Uh, I I guess I'll start with family because they're gonna be there regardless. Like you said, sometimes your friends are your family, and you get to pick your friends. You don't get to pick your family. All right, great friend, family, friends. Okay. Real fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes your friends like I love my family unequivocally. I got their back, but I got some friends that nigga I fucks with them hard. And mm-hmm. uh, I, would, I would give my life for some friend. Uh, yeah. One act drama. Friends or family? Family, because my kids. I'm not mad at that. Okay, my, I you love get my your mama. Kids. Kids. What? You get your mama. Oh, yeah, my mama too. And my daddy. But really, my kids. Yeah, of, course, of course, Mr. Ralph. You know, you know, you love Ralph. I'm telling you. All right, here we go. Last one, guys. Truth or a lie? A truth or a lie? Drama or truth or a lie? The truth. Mm, lie to me, nigga. Don't lie to me. Lie to me. How does this, that shit look amazing? Lie to me. Mm-mm. Tell me the truth, because I'd rather cry now and that be it, then later I'm crying and pissed off, because you lied to mm-hmm. me. Let mm-hmm. me cry now. And make the decision. Because when you lie to somebody, that's deception. So you're leading me mm-hmm. down to stay with you in either a friendship or relationship when I would have left a long time ago. Don't yep. drag me through nothing. Let me make a decision. Gr- Granny Wilder said truth. Mama Miss said mm-hmm. truth. Uh, T. Gray. For a lot. Definitely. Definitely give me the truth. Definitely. And I deliver it. So that's why I expect the same thing in return. I think people use the idea of the truth to be mean. All, so, I'm, just trying to, all I'm doing is be honest. I'm just trying to, uh, but nobody asked you, nigga. That part. So I get accused of that. I'm a Sag. And so naturally, we are very honest. We are very blunt with our delivery. Right. Um, and so I get accused of that, but it's all in how you say it at the end of the day. The truth is still the truth. It's, it doesn't matter how you dress it up. It's still gonna have the same effect. So, you know, deal with it as it comes. All right, but you'll see truth or a lie. Truth all day, because that gives you options. If you tell me the truth, I can decide whether I'm gonna deal with you or not. All right, last question of the ladies. And I know y'all not gonna agree with me on this. And I don't know if I agree with me on this, to be honest. Of course, we saw Cat William go ether last week. Million views on Club Shay Shay. Mm-hmm. Then subsequently, a couple of days later, we said Tori Hart is going on tour with Cat Williams. My question is: Tori Hart wrong for going on tour with Cat Williams? What's your thoughts, One Act Drama? She's wrong if she did not talk to him first, to Kevin first. If she talked to him first and he said, "That's up to you," or that's fine, cool. But if she talked to him and he said no, as the mother of his children, I would stand in alliance with him for the sake of my children, knowing that I'm not gonna play about your daddy. Like wow. we are a family at the end of the day. And when somebody come against your daddy, they come against all of us, whether we together. Or not. Mm-hmm. Whether we together now. Well said when I drama. That is the, the most interesting perspective I've I've heard. Uh and I, I, I'm sure Kevin would have said that too. I'm sure Kevin would be like, "Hey, you you do use this, you know." Yeah. And, but I see I see people saying making leap saying, "Well, he never had a career." I'm like, "That's not true. That's not mm-hmm. entirely true." True, Michelle. See, what's your thoughts, man? Tori Hart 
uh, going to a Cat Williams. Um, uh, and, you know, since it says Shasha interview, Cat's tickets through the roof, you know, tickets going up to thousand dollars a piece in certain cities. Um, somebody, some, some people, some people, just get your bag, sis, get your bag. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I'm getting a bag. So you, you don't care that, that your ex husband been take care of you for the last 20 years? I'm getting the bag. And I, give me this, Michelle. Is it more no. powerful to get your own bag? Is, that's is what it, I'm, yeah. Yeah. That, I, don't, that's like, I, want, I don't mind somebody taking care of me, but at the end of the day, I don't want you to be able to hang that over my head. I want to be able to do it my own. Now, if you help me, I appreciate it. But don't ever say, remember when I gave you? No, I don't remember, nigga, because I got my own bag. Mm. Uh, how about that? And, and I'm not mad at anybody getting their own bag. And that's what I had to process as I was thinking about this. T. Gray, Tori Hart, getting her own bag. Uh, is she is she is she connecting herself to the ops though? Is 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 she? I mean, this dude this dude want to fight your your ex husband, you know, or, or or battle rap or whatever you want to do. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Know? My perspective is probably a little outside the box um, because as a comedian, I wouldn't allow another comedian to put me in a position that I wasn't ready for. And mm-hmm. on a personal level, I feel like Tori Hart isn't ready for the level of stage. That's my personal thing. Wow, but I also cool. wouldn't allow another person to use me in that way. Because mm-hmm. if you're only going on tour with him at this point because of the backlash and because of all of that, why would you allow yourself to be used as a pawn in this back and forth with social media? Now, mm-hmm. is it going to be lucrative? Probably so. You're going to walk away with a check? Yeah. But is your dignity still going to be intact? Are you going to lose followers once they see you? Um, or all these other things that could come down the pipe later. And then how do you, what if your kids feel a certain kind of way? What if they feel like, oh, he came at dad. So now you got to rationalize to your children why you on this team and not that team. Like, I feel like it's, it's too much. I feel like That's it's too team. much. And I feel like it was, it could have been a, a better decision. Yeah. A better yeah. decision could have been made. Yeah. Definitely. I feel like you can't teach family unity. You can't teach family mm-hmm. unity and then do that. Like I said, but if Kevin said cool or do what you got to do, fine. But if he said no, I'm standing by my family. No matter how I feel about the man at the end of the day, I got to, right. my uh, kids are looking at me. Yeah, wow. definitely. Definitely. I mean, I a lot. I'm sure they'll figure out they're all, they're all grown ups, you know. I mean, Cat's not a horrible, horrible <laughs> tour to be on. I mean, it, it is a not at all. <laughs> and, and, and the question that Terry poses is a great question. Even ready to be on 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 a on a big stage like that, the the math of a big stage is different than a club. Like the last mm-hmm. go to the room, go to the back of the room. Way take way longer. You gotta, your timing got to be right. Everything got to make got to make sense. But I mm-hmm. mean, I think she'll be, I think she'll be finding the way. And uh, thank you guys for uh, for answering that question. I'm Perry. This is Rudy Perry Live. That's our show for today. Great show. Thank you, T. Great came in here. All came in here shooting threes. <laughs> I miss y'all. Happy birthday tomorrow, Miss Michelle C. Uh, happy birthday Thank tomorrow. You. And when I drum, always a pleasure. You're looking fit today, sis. Uh, my name is Ray Perry. The show was great. And so are you. Uh, that's it. Let me get on out of here. Let me hit the boom button that day. <laughs> oh.